What's happening, people? Welcome back to the podcast today. We have the, what are we calling you, the ADHD king. They are for the ADHD or king. The, Let's go the for it. The DHD king. And this was going to be an episode touching on the, the controversial, which wasn't controversial at all, um, Joe Wick's statement about ADHD. But then we just spent an hour talking about ADHD and I came at it from more of a, I'm very uneducated on it and I wanted to educate myself. And I think we've done that And I tried on an ADHD. Well, James you? obviously took fucking ages to, <laughs> to educate me. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, that, but that is a, that's the symptoms that's of a part it. Of it. That's so a that, the whole, it was a whole journey that was <laughs> filled with ADHD. Um, but that was much better than fucking talking about Joe Wicks, this non-event, by the way. Uh, it was like yeah, a not. It wasn't even a thing. It was just nah. people being gimps. I talk shit. <laughs> <laughs> so enjoy uh, like that, the the educational process of me learning about ADHD and that shit ton of shit. Do you remember Saturday? The what we were talking about and stuff in here. Hi. Uh, I'm not going to mention what we were talking about because that's uh, uh, that keep, keep that off air. But what we, do, you, do you remember? Like your drive, your drive home or that. No, no, you don't remember. No, well, do you remember what you were really doing or anything when you were driving home? No, listen to tunes. Were you? Well, what kind of songs? Hardcore songs. Hardcore songs. Uh, Probably, yes. no doubt. Um, I don't know, James. I was in front of you the full <laughs> Joe Carriageway. I, I know, I know, <laughs> I know. I didn't know. I, you never met. Like, I was trying to wave at you, nearly crashing all that. Oh, <laughs> I, and then I looked around and you were like that. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, does he not know I'm here? Because you're just like that. <laughs> Man, I'm with. always vibing. No, I knew you were there. Right, okay. I said I sat behind you and I never took you. Right. But okay. I was in just a pure chill mode after Saturday. So I was like, ah, I was really kind of bored driving fast home. Do you know what I mean? I honestly thought you hadn't seen me in the full time. No, I was I like, seen you this does he way. drive this? This is the whitest man <laughs> driving through the bells. <laughs> it looks like you're listening to like Tupac or something. You're like, no, no, no <laughs> rap, mate, no rap. What was I listening to then? Can I be in that? Must have been a wee bit slower. I don't know. I listen to everything, mate. Do you? No, I hear you. It's your hard style stuff, which is. Like, no, I listen to everything. Everything. I've got a very wide genre of music. I don't really listen Well, I now know what your neutral music is. Aye, aye, aye. Mate, naughty tunes are top tier. Is that is Backstreet Boys noughties? Aye. I thought that was, is that not late 90s now? Even if it is, it's the same I think shit, it still it? counts as that either, to be fair. Because I think Backstreet Boys, I feel like, is just before I remember, if you know what I mean. Aye, aye, Backstreet Boys are class. Because I'm 95, and I know the songs, but I don't feel it. My, uh, like, my first music that I remember is, like, Bruce Springsteen. Obviously, it was old, but my dad played me him. <laughs> See, I was going to say, you were an only child, right? So I had that older sister, so... I was uh, brought up with all that kind of stuff all the time. Like, she went to Spice Girls and all that kind of thing. So I was, like, brought up in that kind of household. So I think the first, like, proper music I remember f that was not, like, made years ago was, like, Robbie Williams. Oh, Like, yeah, Angels yeah, yeah. and all uh, that. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Millennium. But I'd have been, like, five when I remember that. So I, I love, like, tunes, like, like, even, like, no, I wouldn't say Spice Girls, but tunes like that. So good. Oh, I love, uh, not, what's the Robbie Williams song oh i'm gonna have to find it on my phone i'm not playing it obviously because i'll get thingied but you know exactly what i'm talking about can i get cooperated on this i ah, well not on spotify but i'm not gonna do it anyway uh feel feel that's what it is mate feel is a tune i don't even know if i've heard that one you will have i uh, won't play it but anyone that's listening right now go just go and stick on feel after and this and you'll, feel, feel the you'll have a great day right we're gonna touch on this joe wicks thing let's do it um before we get into it, right, I'll just say I know I know nothing about ADHD. I'm just going to be honest. I absolutely know nothing. I, all my that's why you brought but, me on, mate. But how much do you know? You just know. Do you? How much research have you done into it? Loads. Have you? Right. Okay. So, but you're you kind of need to when you're in that like self diagnosis stage because uh, you you're you're undiagnosed. But like, there's not many people that have met you that have, have not went yeah fair. <laughs> aye, 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 aye. And I've met people with ADHD, like diagnosed, and they went, aye, aye, like, you've definitely got it. Aye. But then but I. But so have I, I hadn't been told, and I'm like, I, I don't think aye, I do. Aye, aye, but do you know what? Like, aye, that's, aye, aye, aye. that's the thing that's. I, I've got biases, right? So I'm going to explain this as like, I'm like my dad, where like when he was first figuring out about like mental health and stuff, like didn't, not didn't want to hear it, but like I'm willing to be told about stuff, mm -hmm. but. I would have, I'm like a dinosaur when it comes to ADHD. Yeah. I think enough, 
and not enough people actually come out and go, do you know what? Like I don't know anything about it, mm -hmm. and I've got, I've got, we have natural biases about oh, stuff. Oh, they get it so wrong. But my natural bias comes from people saying I have it. Ah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'm getting annoyed by that. Mm -hmm. So my mine's comes from like, see, when I've wrote on social media that I'm burnt out, I've had like hundreds of people message me going, "You need to get that ADHD diagnosis." I'm like, mate, you don't even know who I am. Like, ex so when you look at it like that, you got to look at it and like. So why would I get an ADHD diagnosis when I'm like you're not going to take meds? So like and you, you're no you don't have it. Like I don't think you have it. Like I, when I meet somebody with ADHD who's diagnosed, right? Every single person. So Shannon, Heather, and Katie are three <coughs> people I've met and spoke to on various, various, various occasions. Who's the other one? Shannon, Heather, who? And Katie. Oh, hi. Katie, Katie. Hi. And uh, she's been on the pod. When I met them in person, she's been on my pod. I was thank you. For I, 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 I know. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> it's been on my phone right. too. When I met them in person for the first time, you you have this weird connection, and it's not like a boy girl connection. It's like, what the fuck's happening here? Connection? Mm. Like, they just all happen to be ladies. They just, I bet that's just they all happen to be ladies. I've met men, met as well, yeah. but like, I've not actually met. I don't actually know any guys who are diagnosed that I've met. To be fair, but. When I've met them, right, so Shan, the first time I spoke to her, we spoke for like an hour and a half straight about random shit. And then like, it came out, well, I've both got ADHD, and I was like, that makes sense. Mm. Same with me and Heather, and then same with me and Katie. It's like such a strange thing, because like when two of you have got it, you bounce half each other, but you burn each other out quickly. Right. Because it's like so much happening. But you know what they're saying, and they know what you're saying, so you can move on to the next conversation really fast. Right. Do you get me? Whereas, so you're not actually talking like these are having two different conversations, aye. but you're both following it. Aye, aye. Whereas other people will be like, "What, what the talk? fuck's happening here?" Aye. So that is like that was my first thing we were meeting somebody else, and I was like, "Fucking hell, man, this is like true." And then one time in here in this room, it was me, Shannon, Katie, and Dale was sitting there like, "What the fuck is actually going on?" We all left from like, "Holy fucking moly!" But so many people have got it so so wrong because before I thought I had it. I'm like, there's no fucking way I would have anything like that. Like, I'm no this, I'm no that, I'm no this. Because you, you have, obviously, what you think it is, and then what it actually is. Aye, aye that's, the way, like, I, that's where I'm. Mm -hmm. um, and I know I am. So that's why I don't come out and say ridiculous things about it, because mm -hmm. I, it's it's kind of trending, and, like, it is. Oh, it's trending for it's, some... It's trending, and I think that's probably going to be, like, bad overall if you know what people are like oh people need to be more diagnosed but also loads of people are self-diagnosing themselves when they don't have it so it can so be negative like hypochondriacs which um, is the problem in life it can be i think it's more net negative for the people that actually have it do you know what i mean oh absolutely absolutely that's, that's my that's more my old stance on it also i think i told you didn't i that i went on sylvester's podcast and he'd recently been diagnosed and he was telling me i have it and then he was throwing all these vague things at me like you're an oversharer and i was like and and then he was like hey, you're you're very erratic when you speak and i was like and i, I was like i don't there's nothing about my day that i feel like i'm being held back by something i've got like a low attention span but mostly if i'm doing something i'm not interested in mm -hmm. and i'm like that but that, is that not quite like so is that not a normal reaction? It's you know common I mean? as well. It's common as well. Because um, like people, when people say stuff to me about you having it, I was like, "Well, that all sounds like, like I, I, you're telling me that I can't concentrate on something." I'm like, "Yeah, but I hate doing that." So aye, like, aye. like, I've got a personality as well. Like, it doesn't mean I'm got something wrong with me because I hate doing what you, admin. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I, I hate. No one likes doing admin. <laughs> like, we're all we're, we're all built for something different. And I refuse to do like my washing. Like that's one that people use. Like, oh, I, oh, I can't mate, put the what? washing out. And I'm like, I can't put the washing out. But the, the washing is the worst part. <laughs> no, that is the worst part on the planet. Um, but you know what? I'm. I mean, more obviously, it, it would be things that people with ADHD would struggle with. But just because, like, you, I rec like someone that doesn't have it has same the same struggles mm -hmm. doesn't. I think we throw around that mm. it's it's not so much that people with ADHD don't have the problems. It's more now that any problem people have, people are throwing that word around a bit too much with it. Aye. That's more that gives me the bias and makes me uneducated. Does that make sense? Aye, because you're like, I don't actually know what the fuck's happening. Aye, how am I meant to know? And how am I meant to know when something's serious, when people say something's linked to ADHD that's... I feel like it is a, a daily struggle that I would have 
regardless of anything. I think even with people with ADHD, their individual struggles are all, as I said, individual. Do you know what I mean? Aye. But they're so, they're intense. But that's ADHD what you're doing. Aye, aye, playing that all the time, like, no so be able like, to sit yeah, you don't, like, sit still. No, no, I'm like, I've seen, I've, I've tried to have a conversation with you one time and I've watched you get a resistance band and then 30 seconds into the conversation you're somehow entangled in that resistance <laughs> band and you're trying to figure out how to get out of it whilst talking to me. Because it's like my brain needs something else to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, but people get it wrong, like, ADHD. And I'm sitting watching you, like, what the fuck's happening? To put the resistance band down, <laughs> <laughs> but that's how like that's how I concentrate because that takes my. I'll be probably thinking about two things at one time. So see if I do something while I'm talking to you. What that, are you thinking about now? No, like I'm thinking about like further on in the conversation. <laughs> right. Do you get me? Right. But I'm not thinking about anything in particular. But I'm thinking oh, it's a bit, it's something further down the line. Like if I'm lying in bed, I'm thinking about the morning. If I'm in the morning, I'll be thinking about afternoon. And if I'm in the afternoon, I'll be thinking about night time. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm always thinking a step ahead, but I'm always thinking about the same time at the same time. Like, I've got a couple of... I, <laughs> so, <laughs> that's it. I'm thinking about two things at the oh, same time. Oh, my brain just broke. Time. What? You're thinking about this... You're thinking, thinking about, about the, in the moment. This, so I'm think, I'm thinking in the moment, right now, you're that's... thinking about being in the moment. I but I'm also... Would that be present? But I'm that also, sounds present, no? But I'm also in front as well, at the same time. So you're in the you're in the moment whilst you're in the moment, but you're also ahead of the moment. Yes, exactly. It's very difficult, mate. So ADHD, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, right? So that's ah, that sounds like those three things sounds pretty linked to the, <laughs> to, <laughs> to, the to, to the actual. But the problem with the second part is deficit. It's no deficit. It's definitely no deficit. It's opposite. It's like a dysregulation. That's where people get it wrong. So, like, you've got. Oh, so, you think the naming of it actually throws people off? Aye, aye. Because they think, oh, they people can't, they don't have attention. And, like, as much as I struggle with a lot of things in life, my life in so many aspects is a lot better for the same reasons than other people. Do you mean, like, what pe- people say that you've got superpowers? So, I, I genuinely I genuinely believe, like, I do have superpowers to a degree. So I, I'll so I, I wrote a wee list. Super super sexy, man! I fucking I've got superpowers. I hundred percent have superpowers, and the thing I'm is, a super slayer. <laughs> but you see, the thing is, right? You're always if you if you're diagnosed with anything, and you don't see the positives in it, you're always going to struggle with it because you're only going to see the negatives. So, like, don't don't like authority because authority, man, doesn't he make you feel? Like it's it's hard to describe, but I thought I didn't like authority because it's my personality, right? And a lot of people don't like authority because it's their personality. But then you read into it and you understand there's there's signs behind no liking authority. But no liking authority is a bad thing and a good thing at the same time. Right, everything you're gonna name is gonna gonna sum a lot of me up. Aye, aye. But I still don't think I have. But like even like this, this is that this is what how I there's feel. A, there's, right? a spe- there's a spectrum to everything aye. with ADHD and. Like just as a spectrum to mental mental health. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Exactly. There's no just like But like I, I know for a fact every new name is good. like authority, I will I'm probably worse than you with authority. Like I'm oh. I'm like there's not m- many worse than me. Like I can't do what anybody tell me and Mate. That's why I struggle so much on relationships. Because I'm mm. like, who the fuck are you telling me today? And then I'm like, Whoa, 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 take a step back. But well, it's more I, work for me. Oh no, work like work clip. Work, not. Every workplace I left I end up nearly fighting them. Uh, Cause I go to a point where I'm like, ah, uh, fuck you. But I didn't actually think fuck you when I left. I'm like, fucking. Did, I, did, I did you, that? Do you know how I left that call center? I don't know. I was just hanging up on everyone. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was just like fuck I you. was getting top of the like. There's a KPI thing with how many calls you take. So like you were getting rated on how many calls you could take within the day, and like I was never anywhere near the top. But then like for the last two weeks, I was like bang on the top every time it's because a call will come through and I would just put it down straight oh, away fuck you and, I, and like they were sending out emails like everyone needs to take a, a leak out, leaf out of Gavin's book look how much he's improved and I was like sitting there like shut the fuck up can <laughs> I fucking dis-. and I would stand up and declare my hatred for the place aye, like aye, all aye. the time aye. I'd be like I hate this place and my team leader would be sitting next to me going yeah, I mean, you can't say it. and I would just be like some wee weird woman I was like you can't say that and I was like shut, shut up Shelly this is Terrible. Uh, I fucking hate it working for MDLs. Like, hate it working with big corporations. I was like, how the fuck do you want to work here? How the fuck are you happy working here? 
Like we'll go in and talk about pensions and that. I'm like, I do not give a fuck. I'm <laughs> at 21. I'm like, I don't give a fuck about pensions. I don't even want to be here. Mm. Never mind you pay my, you pay five percent. I don't give a fuck how much you pay. <laughs> do you know that way? You're sitting in every single meeting. I remember I used to fall asleep in college because I'm like, I just do not give a fuck about this. And for a for a point of time, I felt really stupid. Because see, when I was in school, I was really smart. You see, when it came to I didn't do like homework and that. I like, mean, same. Like I was like, fuck that. And I didn't really study, didn't do any of that. But I was always smart up until the point where you kind of had to. So I left in fourth year and I got all like, we'd done standard grades obviously back in. So but da. I was the last standard Why grade. Why did you talk to me like I'm a dinosaur? Huh? Because after me, they went to Nats. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right? No, I'm still in the standard grade. Aye, aye. So I got all credits, and, uh, but I never really studied at all. Studied for one exam because I nearly fucked it up. And I'm like, right, I can't help it. I like the teacher, but I'd sit up the back playing on my phone. I never was really texting anybody, I was like playing games. All day. I mean, this is a quite a telltale sign when I'm like 14, 15, sitting at the back of your class playing games all day, mm. but still being able to pass exams. But my family couldn't put two and two together. Do you know what I mean? But my dad is the same as your dad. Mental health, what's that? Don't know. I'm, I'm, fi- I'm, it wasn't my, my dad wouldn't say he was fine, but my dad would say, you got on with it. Do you know what I mean? My dad's not a pure hard man with it, but he's like, well, it is what it is. Instead of going, like, why is it what it is what it is? That's what more our generation looks at it like. Mm. We look at it and go, right, like, what's actually happening here? Whereas older generation, they just have to keep going and to survive. Uh, Whereas I, we have more, we, we're able to survive quite easily. Yeah, I, th- I just think there's, I think maybe in like 10, 20, 30 years we'll be in a better place, I hope. But I think like their generation paid no attention to it and we almost paid too, too much. much attention, absolutely. And then hopefully it will level out because we, we almost like diagnose everything and there's a aye, aye. there's almost like a disorder now for everything. for everything and it like a, in a genuine detrimental way like not not everything has to be a disorder and even that word disorder fucks i remember when i was like had that anxiety phase for like like a year and then it took me three or four years to look back and go see as soon as i like thought i had anxiety and then like was like i've got anxiety that was the worst thing i'd done oh because i then thought it was like Something that I was like, I I, I had as a as a person, as like I was genetical and like I couldn't like do anything to help myself or anything like that, and that was the worst. That's part. the problem with our healthcare system in general, though, because like the focus is on that one thing, and the focus is no on the general thing that would actually help it. It's like uh, take a pill or like talk uh, to talk to somebody about, your about anxiety. How, how how our lives are designed, but Aye. also by. Like this is what Paul was talking about when we were all when I had him on my podcast. He was there. Paul was my therapist and your therapist as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, about how capitalism is a massive contributor to pretty much all of, like all the struggles that people are having. You know, like poverty, mm-hmm. like even obesity, mate. Like obesity is way more prevalent in uh, poorer areas, and therefore so are mental health issues and stuff like that. Absolutely. So until they fix those issues, which is just like kind of. There's cracks in all the system, and until they fix those cracks, then we're never fixing the cracks. That's just oh the yeah, that, that that's what me and him were talking about. It's like even my job and his job, I'm just like we're just swimming upstream. Right. Well, and we always will be. Like we're just trying to help individuals, but like my my individual advice or like my coaching for people would never. You can't like give that to the full country. It's like our podcast and stuff might help a lot of people, but even if even if the full of the UK could like listen to my podcast or like other people's podcasts that are more informed than me, it wouldn't change because the the way the countries run is the problem. Not we are just trying to help individuals. And the way the world, the way society is, is just that's just how we're all especially going. Western aye, countries. Aye, aye. Aye, well, I, I don't even know. Like you don't really know a lot of the hidden features of other countries. Like it's no well yeah, until you live there, yeah. It's no well documented like what the wee towns are actually like and they could be amazing, they could be absolutely shite. They could be just the same as us. I think Right, walk me through the because we will touch on the Joe Wick stuff, which people are probably gonna think be con- will be controversial and it's not really. Nah, it's not. Um what when did you start knowing you like sort of had ADHD? So so, so it was actually last before year. we actually start, right? Because you came on two years ago and you were talking about the Linden method and having anxiety and being angry or whatever. Right, so I, I, I'll so talk, you didn't know anything about I'll it then, you, did you? No, no, I'll talk you through like a quick brief because it's actually been a super mad journey. So last year, I went through worst breakup ever. 
it was fucking horrendous it was no nice and I was like why is this so intense and I was like like it wasn't even we hadn't even broke up yet but I was like I was on TikTok and I seen a couple of things about ADHD I was like oh that's kind of me and I never really thought anything of it and then I seen a couple more things I was like what the fuck man like that is that's how I've felt since I was like 10 year old and um I kept and then I was like yeah, I'm gonna look this up and I looked up everything I was like everything that I day like there was not one thing that I read up about that isn't a part of my life right there, like nothing that I read up about about ADHD at that point in time and I was like fucking hell and then I just kept reading kept reading I was like fucking hell man I, I've, I've got this like I guess I said to Dale I said I think I've got ADHD and he was like that like, kind of makes sense and like about a lot of things and then I said to a couple of other people and they're like well that makes sense like, so, like, taking it right back, I was 16 when I started, and, uh, so I was a mechanical engineer, but we went to college and that, and I was, uh, like, a wee quiet boy, but, like, I, I loved playing games, and I was, like, just, I never fit it in, in this place, and it was horrendous, I hated every minute, but it was, like, a quite a high level of horrendous, it wasn't it just, I don't really like this place, it's like, I fucking hate this place, and when I was 16, that was the first time I didn't want to be here. Like, that's when the, the feelings kicked in. I was like, I don't really want to be here anymore. Like, why? And I, everything for that point on was always so intense. And then, like, I found drugs and I just loved getting on it. Like, that, like, tunes and drugs, I loved it. Hated everything else. Still got through life. Went through phases of up and down. Girlfriends, etc., etc. But everything was always so fucking chaotic in my life. Like, it was, like, just mental. But I could never pinpoint anything because I was taking a lot of drugs. So you can't say that you've got anything when you're smashing cocaine. <laughs> right. Do you know what I mean? When you've got free eggs, you say, I reckon I've got, I've got ADHD. Uh, I've got ADHD. Aye. You can't eat. <laughs> I've got it, man. <laughs> when you're smashing drugs, barely sleeping, you can't say you've got a disorder until you come off everything. Do you know what I mean? So last year, I'd, I'd, I'd kind of stopped taking drugs when I was like 24. Like maybe dabbled a wee bit like after COVID, but then Which I'm just like, like two or three years. Aye, aye, aye. So like two or maybe You're twenty seven now. I'm twenty seven now, so about twenty four. I've no took that many drugs since, and I used to be like me. I genuinely like we used to take stuff every day sometimes, like through the week, even go to work. Do you know what I mean? Like we would fucking just, and I was like, we'd be addicted to drugs that aren't addictive. Like this is where people say sugar's no addictive and all that shit, and I'm like. It is psychologically addictive, even if it's no physically addictive. And then was in a right good place before I started PT. Started PT, and everybody's like, "You're fucking mental." And I was like, "Fuck it, man, I'm fucking mental." I just, I just went off on that. Like I was like, "Fuck it, I'm mental." I've been told my full life I'm mental. I'd never really fit it in anywhere. I don't. I still don't really. I wouldn't describe you as mental. <laughs> <laughs> but genuinely, I still don't feel like I fit in. That's one of the downsides. That, like I don't feel like I fit in ever. Like, you can see me right now, we, I can sit in a room, but I still don't feel like I fit in anywhere. It's just, like, it's just that underlying feeling that I always have. Like, I don't feel like I'm super connected to anyone because right. I feel like I'm all super different. Do you know that way? And I'm, I know there's other people out there with it, but I still feel super different. So, see, everything you said, apart from the end, but I can, like, I can relate to. So, mm. that's where I, I'm, like, educated. Like, no, also being more educated because I, I don't, Feel like I've never fitted in or stuff like that, mm -hmm. and I'm not fidgeting. That's I mean, like, that's no, no, no. You. But um, like the the for the working stuff like that. Like I see, I've got to points where I, like I'll be in a building. Like say, there's like 200 employees or whatever. Every single place I've worked in, I've hated it. Like people go, I hate, I hate this, and they'll be like, but I'll stay here for ten years. I but they'll look at me and they go, but you're next level because I'll actually be like having veins popping out of my forehead and going, no, I could actually like smack my head off a wall like for 10 hours straight aye, aye, aye. do you know what I mean that but your childhood like, also comes into play with that kind of thing ah that's that's but where I get confused you go into a workplace and you're like fucking hell so that's what I always put it didn't I I was like my childhood was chaotic so the rest of my life's going to be chaotic uh, do you know what I mean that's what I put it didn't I and now I can look back and go oh my childhood was chaotic for a reason do you know what I mean I can clearly see when because all the issues I have with my mum got worse as I got from like nine to ten like nine and ten and i i said this in a podcast before i was always like the smartest in the class until i got to about nine or ten and then i was so i was just a cunt i was just a wee wind up mm. i was all, like 
never done it. Like I was always like fucking detention. And I, I, See, I, 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 I was really badly behaved. To yeah, I was. I was. Point. I was terrible. Like I'm a cheeky cunt. I remember it was P6. That teacher absolutely despised me, and I just spent my full year terrorizing her. <laughs> but her name, I still remember her name was Miss Smith. But she was also, I was, I, not, she, if she was nice hard, to me, mate, didn't they? No, but she was an arsehole. Some teachers, yeah, teachers get it bad, but some teachers are fucking boots. And she was a, so see if my teacher were sound to me, I was fine. Like, so even if they were actually a bit strict, but they were nice and they, aye, they, aye. they had a balance aye. of it, I was actually fine. But see if a teacher would just like picked on you, see you later, man, I was going to r- try to ruin the full year aye. for you. Like, I was just, like, that's what I, that's what I was like. Aye, aye. But so, I, I think that comes from, Childhood. Aye, how chaotic my aye, aye, aye. my household was like. You're that. not going to go into school and be a nice wee quiet boy when in the house fucking mental. Aye, so I, I'm going in and just taking out what's happening. Aye, in the like house. fuck you, aye. Aye. Because I'd come in the house and it's like you don't know what you're getting, so I'm going in the school and doing the same. So I, I, I was actually really well behaved in school for some reason up until maybe third, fourth year. And I wasn't even that badly behaved because I don't know. I just felt like what I was getting in the house, I didn't, nobody else deserved that. At the time, but that's just personality. That's not to do with ADHD or anything. Uh-huh. That's just like how I felt. And then I was always a small wee guy, so that made life even tougher than yeah. it already was. So when I went into the workplace, man, I was like the target, but I couldn't handle it. Right. Like my wee brain was like, I want to actually kill these cunts at the time. <laughs> do you know that way? Oh, that fucking like the, the the anger inside me was always so real. And then it got to a point where I was maybe twenty one, twenty. 19 or 20, they just shot my emotions off. Right. Shut them off. So I was in relationships and maybe my first relationship, I was fucking bonkers on that, I know, to be fair, but she was bonkers on all. Like, <laughs> not, the two, not the two years, but absolutely. Well, mate, when you tell me about your last one, I'm like, <laughs> do you tell me about the stuff both of you were doing and you go, ah, and then I've done this, and I'm like, whoa. Well, I know. But first one, mental, I know. Second one, she actually calmed me down, but emotions, mate, I didn't have any. Mm-hmm. And... What I know now at 27 is I'm a very emotional person. Mm-hmm. Like, I love hard, I hate hard, I just, everything I do is hard. Do you get me? That's part of it. Right. And if if, if you suppress that, it doesn't go well. Because mm-hmm. it comes out in anger. That's the one thing it does come out in, and it comes out in anger at one point. But yeah. Which is the same for every day. But mine's is just so high. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, I was, I wasn't researching this morning, but I was like making sure that I'd, Stuff that I wanted to say the day, and I wanted, I didn't want to get it wrong because I don't want to end um, sp- spreading any misinformation. But I had a couple of tears in my eyes reading it. I was like, fuck, man. Like, what a mad year this has been. Because it was like last year when I realised, and it wasn't like I realised, man, I think I've got it. It's like, man, I've, this has been my, this, no knowing this stuff has been my biggest hurdle my full life. And re- needing to know this stuff and going back to my past at the same time. It's like, I need to do this. And it's like, you know what it's like, go to therapy anyway. Oh, but it's some, fucking it, solid. Some of it was fine, and then some of it was some of the worst times of my life. Which, which I like. No matter what you've got, like if you've got anything, mm. you should be got a therapy, and it's going to be really unveiling. And like if you're no feeling emotional after therapy, going back to the bad times and the good times. I know, but you will. Like if no, no, but no, but some people won't. Mm. Some people won't because they don't believe in it. You, you, you need a good therapist and you also need to be willing to actually do it there's Aye, no you, point you need to believe in I, it I had a few few mates go and like they went twice and they're like oh I tried the therapy I was like man you never Aye. you never you, you went so you could tick a box without actually doing it mm-hmm. so in my last relationship I can say that it was no love it was addiction and that's what I realised and I was like why the fuck was that and then, like, it starts to unravel. I'm like, oh, I've been addicted to this. I've been addicted to that. I've been addicted to this. I've been addicted to a sh- couple of things in my life where it's fucking hindered everything. Like, it's made my days fucking shit. And, like, every day takes, no, every day takes, takes drugs when you're young, younger. But a lot of people do. It's like a big king in Scotland. And a lot of people stay on them because it's hard to get out of that life once you're in it. Like, you're fucking having fun. And then a day hits you where you're fucking skint as fuck. And then the stress for that leads you to stay there. That's how so- some people stay fucking getting on it for so long. But I never really wanted to be there much longer than 21. But I stayed there. Because I was just like, man, I just fucking love this. <laughs> like, I went to Holland and one of my ex-clients, he was there. And I was like, I don't like dating anymore. And he was like, obviously I'm his PT. And he's like, mate, what the fuck happened to you? 
Do you know what I mean? Like they knew me back then, mm. and they know me now, and they're like, "Man, not even the same person." I, I have the same when I went back to Australia. They're like, "What the fuck's happening here?" That's when I was. That was my prime getting on at years. Well, I, I got on it since I was like sixteen to like thirty five, but in Australia it was like three times a week. Aye. Not always drugs. No, to be honest, I didn't touch a drug for the full first year of Australia, and then I started a bit. But it was pints, like three or four times a week, which is also just just terrible as well. It's just as bad. It's just different. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't know why it gets like a but wee what bit. What I would say for that pass. is that kind of. I don't mean to say that puts you at having ADHD, but alcohol does not fuel your dopamine and that like cocaine and any uh, more well. dulls your emotions. Aye, aye. So, so you can you don't really think about things that aye, or aye, like aye. Aye. So I, I would say it's what you pick to be addicted to. I've never like CMDMA does it doesn't do whatever it does to other people to me. So your serotonin is a wee bit different then? But like see when people go oh, I'm coming up, I've never had and I've took I've took it enough times to like I've took it like ten times. I've also took a shit ton twice. Aye. And I don't get the coming up. I just like go on another planet. So like yeah, see when people are dancing and like enjoying music, I've never I've tried it enough times to be like, that's never gonna happen to me because I've right. I mean I took I took about six caps one type caps is just like aye, I know what well, I and in Australia they call aye, them caps, right? Aye. And I would take like one or two every time, go, oh, they must just not be powerful enough. And I'd be like, oh, sometimes like that fucking, tra well, I don't know why we're talking about drugs so much, but fuck it. But like that, that yeah, tree, that's, no, but that's a massive part of it. I, well, that tree, right, that would go really green. Like I would, the colours, like colours would come out, but I wouldn't get the fucking vibration down me. And I have had, well, like I have been out my dish on other stuff. Do you know what I mean? Aye, like, aye, I, aye. like cat will fuck, fuck me up, cocaine will fuck me up, but MDMA just it never hit me the same way that it hits other people. And then one time I took like six or something and just I wasn't on the same planet as everyone else. And like I remember seeing trees and they were just kind of like all merging together. And then people would be like tapping me going, you are it. So I'm obviously like I completely out my dish. <laughs> I, 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 but I'm not getting the same what everyone talks about. I'm like, and I've never. I, I. Like the reason I talk about drugs is because I've no mate MD who's shows. <laughs> proper signs it or who has it that's no smashed lots of class A stimulants in our life but there obviously will be a lot of people that haven't though if you know what I mean don't believe it <laughs> obviously there will be mate but who have ADHD ch children nah. children haven't experienced I know yet, yet but they will they will they, they are the people who are susceptible to it mm. because that's what will give them that high do you know what I mean if they take that once it's like so it's like Dale says it he's like try that and never done anything to me Somebody who with ADHD who tries that, they'll go, man, that felt fucking amazing. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Because that gives them that dopamine. Well, I did try it. Plenty of other stuff. Just It's just MDMA didn't hit me. I always hated weed. Um, but I did have a wee catty phase. Aye, aye. And then I had, had a horrendous cat hole and I will never touch it. Well, I'll never touch it. never again. I haven't drank in like two years, but the cat hole was one of the worst things that's ever happened to me. See, mushrooms was class. Aye, mushrooms was class. See if you are if you got ADHD, like that's the reason why I stopped drinking. I went, I've got ADHD. What was one of the worst things for that? Alcohol, because it dysregulates your mood. And I was like, that makes sense, man. Because I, I always have, I've always been the guy. Why do you get such bad hangovers? Why do you get such bad hangovers? Why do you get such bad hangovers? I'd have a couple of drinks. I'm like, I'm hungover, man. But like, no, physically, like I didn't feel sick. I didn't feel drift, drift. Didn't feel dry. I was like, I just don't. I feel shite. I'm like that as well. And. Like, that's part of it, because it just, like, your dopamine's no high already, and that just fucking puts it in the ground. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So you wake up, you sh sleep with shite, your dopamine's fucked, and you get really rough, whereas people have semi-decent dopamine, they drink, they get to here, no too bad, and it also, like, their their brain replenishes faster. They're, they're less likely to be, mate, like, if you drink, and you've no ADHD, then you're going to wake up, feel shite, but you're not going to do anything that's going to be super detrimental to your brain. Because I'll get up and I'll go, fucking, I need to stimulate my brain. Man, just stimulate it till it's burnt out. By wanking. Probably. <laughs> no doubts. I could see it in your eye. Aye. You didn't want to say it. We've all done that. <laughs> uh, oh, mate, the next day, I'm I'm so fucking horny. Uh, why it's not a real, It's not a real, like, it's not a real horny. You're like, why am I horny now? But you're like, I'm like, man, it's unbelievable. No, I, I've... I, I think everybody I gets that, that, but I'm like, man, I, I could shag a hole in this bed. <laughs> uh, you could? No, I know. I've tried. <laughs> I think every wee boys tried back in the day. Uh, no, it was more so pillows. Aye, aye, yeah, I know. But it never works. Aye. 
But that next day, man, horrendous. And I'm like, this is only a drink that does this to me. What I did realise, see if I like, play a game for an hour. No? I used to bash it. I used to be addicted to games. See if I play a game for an hour. I feel my addiction's coming back for everything else instantaneously. Right. So I don't play games anymore. I played Crash Bandicoot there for a while and I was like, I can't, I can't do this. Like, I feel like I'm, I feel like everything's just, I'm only playing Crash Bandicoot and I'm like, I physically feel every addiction coming back right I now. I feel like all of this is quite complicated. Does that make sense? So complicated. Does that make sense? So it's, it's hard to follow because loads of it I'm relating to and then other bits I'm like, right, there's the difference. See, do, that, do you get what I mean? It's quite hard to... The problem where it, where it comes down to is people think if you've got that symptom, you've got ADHD. Yeah, yeah. But somebody with ADHD is going to have every symptom. Yeah, yeah. And it, every symptom is going to be intensified. But that I think that's the problem with how it's getting misinformed then, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Because all those symptoms, everyone... And, the, and this day and age like, with it, phones and all that. And also people that... Make it worse. You're relying on people with ADHD to be really informed about it when that's not going to be the case. No. So even they are going to be spread, like, no offence, but, like, people with ADHD. Like, the m- people that have annoyed me the most about ADHD are people who have just been diagnosed with it telling me that I've got it. Do you so, get what I mean? So when I first realised, I was, like, on the ball, like, try, I, it's weird. It's just a natural thing when you first get something, you're probably feeling quite enlightened to then... Yeah, Hello, like, I was enlightened. When I first had therapy, I'm like telling everyone, do you Aye, know what? So it's the that same is exactly thing. exactly new. I'm like, my nah, man, like, if they've got it, they've got it. I don't really give a fuck. So I'll go through some things so, like, we, we get past the the stage of no too sure what it means, Aye. right? So we've got emotional dysregulation. Everybody with ADHD struggles with emotional dysregulation. Now, everybody through a day. Talk me through what um, that really means. So everybody through a day, their moods go up and down. That's just how, that's just how your day goes. Now, because. Dopamine is low, and people with ADHD. That's a symptom. No, it, that's that that is. That's a criteria for having it. Right? Ah, yeah, you, cool. you you don't have ADHD. This is better go. So your dopamine is low, right? That's just how everyday with ADHD functions, and their personality will decide what 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 parts of this they go out more into. Mm-hmm. But it's always more intense. So everybody's mood goes like that, up and down, up and down for the day. It's just how it goes, no matter what you're doing. Now, somebody with ADHD like me, I wake up feeling really sluggish every day like and there's no like see people go oh i feel really good never because when i wake up dopamine is always really low now if you are not on top of that you'll try to find something that will give you really fast dopamine now we live in a world where people are, people are doing that anyway so this is why people are getting misdiagnosed yeah. because they're doing the things that do fuck up the dopamine anyway right so, like, if you search for something, you I'll put more effort into getting that dopamine from it to make me feel better. Now, that means I go from here to here. Now, what happens after that? Back down to here, but even further, because that's just how it works. So, if I'm not on top of that and I'm going, I cannot go into that because I'll end up burning myself very quickly through the day, then your emotions go from here to here, up and down really, really fast. The, the lower you go down, the higher you go up. Yeah. And then the higher you go up, the lower you go down again. And then it only gets worse if you're no in control. So say something happens in your life. Like if I, I was always in relationships, really, if I started arguing, it was game over. Like, man, it was World War you 3. You couldn't get yourself back. I, I couldn't get myself back. It was World War 3. The overthinking was insane. Like I was doing things to like ruin it by this point because I'm like, I can't handle this anymore. This is That's one of the parts that made me realise there's something no right here. Because yeah. when the argument started... And I try and argue as little as I possibly can. And I always thought it came from a house. But, like, if somebody really hurts me, man, like, my emotional regulation kicks in and I don't even know where I am. Like, I'm in autopilot mode at this point. Yeah. Like, it's just going bang, 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 like, up down. Like, I'm getting dopamine for the argument, but then when I crash, it's so fucking bad. Like, I'm bang, bang, bang. So that's all it is. It's just up and down too fast. Right, is there more symptoms you're going to read? Mm-hmm. So get that. That's helpful. That's that's actually helpful. Right. Next one is executive dysfunction. Executive dysfunction. dysfunction. So they struggle to do the things you need to do because they don't make you feel good enough when you're low. So as I say, so you don't get a big enough dopamine hit from putting from, out the wash and aye. like doing the admin. So you do it. So you don't do it. So basically, if you wake up way low dopamine and you end up doing something, it's actually going to cripple it even more. So give you that emotional dysregulation. So if I've got emotional dysregulation, see the dishes, the washing, the cleaning, they're the first things that go for me. And I, it's not even the fact that I'm lazy, it's the fact that I'm physically paralysed by something inside me and I just kind of get off the couch. 
I'm not doing anything. I'm not even sitting on my phone sometimes. I'm just sitting there. Like, man, I can't get up. Do you get me? Mm-hmm. It's like, I'm like, I'm fucked here. So the emotional dysregulation usually causes this executive dysfunction. So you've got things you need to do and people, when when they don't have it, can do them pretty easily. Now, some people are lazy, right? Because they've been brought up in a household where cleanliness is not a thing. I wasn't that. I was brought up in a very clean household. So my family was, how can you not keep things clean? How can you not keep things clean? How can-? I'm like, I don't fucking know. I don't know why I can't do this. And it actually hurt. Like, I'm like, why can't I not do this? And I would beat myself up. I'm like, I can't. Like, I'm trying so hard to be keep this place clean and tidy. And I can't think straight. So in my house, I've got how I clean the living room. So I've got lists for me. So I write doing, th- write doing things. And then I've got how I clean the kitchen. Because if I go into clean the kitchen without a list, I'll forget what part I usually start on. I forget what part I usually do next. And if I'm not doing it following that list, I won't do it. And uh, I, get, I get I get this. This is better. This is way better. Keep right. On. So that's executive dysfunction, struggling to do normal things when you're not feeling good, and it's not through laziness. It's through your brain just genuinely Aye. struggles. Right. Time management. So I was. You late. were on time today. A couple of minutes late. Well, that's good. I know. Yeah. I know. A couple of minutes late, and the fact is, I said I'd be five minutes early. Night. No, I don't remember. I don't remember. No, I said to myself before oh, I left, right. I was like, I'll be five minutes early. And there was no traffic. There was five minutes. I was five minutes late. Uh, how that works is because you're a prick. <laughs> but that's how I always okay. felt. No, but that's how it always right. made me feel. And Dale was like, "Why are you so late? Why are you so late? Why are you so late?" And they made it say that they made it stress me out in the situation. So now I know why how it works. Basically, gain low dopamine. So before I leave somewhere, I end up getting heightened doing something else. I lose track of time. And then I go to leave and I'm, I'm leaving late. Do you get me? Whereas people go, right, I need to leave at this time. Everything's there ready. Now, I can be ready an hour in advance. I'm usually still late. I'm either really early or late. I need to be either like 15 minutes early or I'm going to be late because I don't know. I just end up finding something to do quickly and it just takes me longer than I think. I don't, I can't compute that it's going to take me 10 minutes instead of 20. And then I'm late. I'm late all the time. I was late for at like most clients by like two minutes. If they're my first client, I'm late two or two to five minutes. And I'm like, what the fuck's actually wrong with me? Like I'm trying to be there on time. Right. So, and it's just because I find something to do before I leave. I don't mean it. Because it gives me that, oh, I, I feel good. I don't mean I So that's, what that, that's, that's a big thing for most people. Like that's why people with ADHD will be either really early or really late. Okay. Right. And that's like if... So inattention, I mean, clear as day, like the resistance band. Aye, aye. Like I won't be. I'm never. It's very, very rare that I'm fully concentrated on one thing. So that's why I love training. That's why I love lifting, because that, that's the times where I can get fully concentrated on uh, on things. And is that because, like, you're raising your heart rate and like because I'm it? moving at the same time as thinking. Right. Do you know what I mean? So I'm doing two things at once. But it's also like the one thing at once. Do you know what I mean? So that's why it's good. Like I'm doing the train, I'm doing the new because I'm thinking. Also, about like you're, you're gonna be in a different state. Aye. Like a completely different state. Aye, you're no in. Your your dopamine is raised, so uh-huh. you're no thinking. You don't. You're getting that dopamine through that one thing. Whereas if I'm sitting here, and time goes on, it's getting lower and lower and lower, and I'll just like find. Because I've now used learned how to use exercise if I go into fight or flight. Oh, aye, aye. And it aye. really helps me with aye, that. Aye, aye, aye. It, 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 that's why I exercise every day now because it gets me in a heightened state where my brain can start to regulate itself a little bit more than it could be so inattention I mean it's clear as day like you struggle to say at- attention to one thing because it does not give you enough hmm. and it's not, the not fa- enough feedback and not uh, enough not enough feedback and it's usually pretty quick like you're like what you spoke about earlier like you said I struggle to like something if I don't like it then I'm struggling to struggle to do it Everybody's like that. Yeah, that's what I was. That's See, with me, like it's like we edit that podcast. I said to the ass, I don't want to fucking do this. I fucking hate this. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I fucking hated it. Mm. I was like, this is fucking shite. Mm. Like I started to get that way. I'm. Like, I don't want to feel this way about my work. Like I don't fucking enjoy this at all. This gives me nothing. And like I was going through my head, and I couldn't find enough of a reason to give me enough of a feeling. Jink personality comes into that a wee bit as well because, say for instance, James Smith has it right and. Like, I've heard him speak extensively about it, but he loves editing and that. Oh, I know. So, uh, whatever you love is whatever uh, you love. Okay. 
That, but, that's what whatever I you that's like, where that the, the gets confusing. Oh, it. I know. Just uh, you, you're going to be super. So, like, you, what you're talking about with exercise, I've heard him speak about that a wee bit, like wedding. Aye, 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 aye. So people will get that feeling for different things. So that's what I was just going to speak about there. Hyper focus is the next thing. So that's a superpower part. So, like, when I started PT, people are like, "Oh, how long have you been PT for?" I'm like three months. They're like, "What? Have you been PT for like well over a year? Like maybe two? I'm like, that's just because when I, when I do something, I hyper-focus on it and it's the only thing in my life. Now, as I said, there's detriments to everything. I hyper-focus and I forget about everybody else. Everything else, everybody else. So when I'm studying, when I'm doing, I don't care about anything else even I'm working. I don't care about anybody else. Like, I am hyper-focused on what I like. Now, when that becomes a problem is when it's a girl. I hyper-focus on them. And, like, they are the only person in the world. And... People in Jai Dio say to me, like, I'll, I will have a joke. And they go, you fall in love with a different lass every week. And I go, it's just because I just change. And, like, I genuinely forget that the other lass exists. And I, that I'm not talking to these people, by the way. It's just like, oh, I think she's really fucking good looking. And I go, oh, she, oh, she is really fucking good looking. And I think that lass is really good looking for, like, maybe a week. And then hyper-focus will move on. Now, luckily for me, my hyper-focus has always been on fitness. And I think it always will be. To a degree where I put so much effort in it. But then I forget about other people. And other things. So that's where like I hyper focus on my my fitness and my health and my business. And then I forget I've got a house that needs to stay tidy. And then I, one day I'll be sitting in my living room and I'm like, fucking hell man, this place is a fucking mess. And then it'll like I'll be hyper focus will leave. It'll stop. My brain will like get back to baseline and I'll go, Oh my god, I've not done anything else but that. Yeah. It's just my brain's going to so many different places. <laughs> Because I'm trying to learn more about it, Aye, but so then I, I have I, more I, I questions. focus is one of the main ones. I have more questions all, every time you say something, if that makes sense. Hit me. You know, the, like, see a lot of these things as well. I, get, I feel like the waters get quite murky with, like, people that have suffered with, like, trauma and stuff. Like, the stuff that they, they, the the problems then they face. Aye, you know aye, aye, aye. It seems like it's very hard to go... These aren't all like interlinked. So does that make sense? The difference between the trauma is it's hypervigilance and ADHD. Like hypervigilance would cause a lot of these things. Hypervigilance is caused by like severe trauma where you need to be alert to everything around about you because Which is what I would have suffered from. Aye, aye, aye. That's that's why I know yours is hypervigilance and no ADHD because you'd said about the MDMA. Because MDMA acts in serotonin. Yeah, yeah. Right? And like your serotonin is going to be low if you're hypervigilant. Yeah. Because you're struggling to enjoy anything in your life. Whereas I can fucking love, like even in the worst times of my life, I would always find something to fucking love because mm. that's where my brain would go. Well, I think I that's maybe why I, I went to alcohol more because it dull, dulled my emotions. That's exactly why. So that's what, that would make sense between, because I, 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 that, that does make sense, doesn't it? I feel I, like we've actually came to a conclusion I, there or like why I, hypervigilance. Well, why, why I do relate to a, a lot, lot of these of things, it, but I've used different ways to get around things. Hypervigilance is no, uh, Mental disorder from birth. Hypervigilance is your environment. Oh, well, I, de- I definitely don't. I'm almost a million percent sure that I don't. I don't genetically suffer from something, but I, it was my childhood that. Aye, aye. Because I can. I, I've went for therapy on it. Like I can clear. It, it's so clear as day when I when I've went for therapy. Like why I have made certain decisions in my life because of what I've been through. Oh, aye, aye. Like I, it's it's, it's, so, it's so related. Do you know aye, what I mean? Aye, it's not aye. even like. Oh, maybe it's hard. It's quite. It's, no, that's quite bold. It's quite obvious. Oh, my my first two girlfriends were pretty gaslighty, like my mum. Do you know what I mean? Like I, I was. I, I went to, to the same. To, like you're going to love what you love back then. Like if you're. If well, I didn't love it at any point. <laughs> no, but that's what you. you I know, you're, you're only form of what love was that. To, aye, yeah. aye. Um. So I that made, I, that I, makes sense. Cause I, alcohol, I ended up a bit hypervigilance for a while because because like, I loved that. Like I, I didn't just like. I drink. I really, I, like, I really drink because it 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 blunts everything. Yeah, so I I, I would have, like my first go to thing. I wouldn't. I wasn't addicted ever. But well, to be honest, mate. See if I never found like. See if I couldn't work for myself. See if I was forced to work for someone. I I think I would be become an alcoholic. an alcoholic. I felt if there's no other way. Out. Yeah, they're like if like I can't work for people. I I simply can't do it. See when people suggest like, oh, you're pretty stressed for running your own business. I'm like, I take that every single day of the week. Over, you've not met me when I've got a job. If you've uh, ever, yeah, I'm the same. I'm the same. If you can imagine, like, I can't. I, I honestly can't. I, like my brain breaks straight away. Oh, but I would have coped a lot with drinking with that. Like I would have got like 
work. Right, it, might, it, couldn't even, it might not have been a bad day at work. Just every day at work for me was bad. Aye. Like and I, like I was just constantly like just so so like just annoyed, more annoyed than angry. I was just pissed off. I hated Aye. everyone and I hated what we were doing. I hated being forced to do something I'd seen no value in, which I didn't see the value in anything I was doing. Which and is then, a personality trait as well as anything uh, else. But I would have numbed it with drinking. But that makes sense. I'm more like numbing my emotions rather than searching for, for a high. More, more, for more, more, I don't. More. I didn't need a high. I needed to dull no what feel I was, it. Aye, no my feel feelings. It. And that's why, that, that is the difference. And quite glad we came to that conclusion because a lot of people... That's good, isn't it? So I feel like that, that we've got somewhere so, there because so, I can so understand me, better. Like, uh, that's, that's the thing we have. Need. Each day I'm just going to talk mints for a while as well. Aye. That's just part of it. Uh, but... Many people have hypervigilance, mate. Many, many. And I have a wee bit of hypervigilance on top of it. Do you know what I mean? Like, 100%. Like, parts of my hang on the ADHD, part of mine are, like, hypervigilance for growing up in a crazy household as well. Do you know what else I think's fucking... Like, because I want people to understand that we're going to have biases and we're going to, like... Like, I, I feel pretty, like... I can look at stuff and go... I'm sceptical as fuck about stuff, which is... I, I think it's like a good trait that I have because I don't believe random. That's you. I, I, I don't believe random things. Like, I'll always question stuff, which I, same. most people don't, right? They'll I, believe I, anything. And, like, most things on the internet are are, are false. Like, mm-hmm. factually, like, the percentage, percentages, most things you see on the internet are false. Mm-hmm. And people will believe anything. So, one of my biases for, like, feeling like, oh, ADHD, I'm not sure, is it a trend and all that. But I'm willing to, like, say that I'm wrong because it only comes from I'm uneducated as fuck about it. Yeah. Like, that's... But do you know what my mum... When I was trying to get my mum diagnosed, so my mum is... She has the top-tier mental health issues, the real deal. (laughs) Do you know what I mean? Like, no fucking about... She is insane. Like, you go, like, you've got anxiety, depression, right? This is... My mum is clinically mental... So I I used to go. But wait, what? I asked her to go get diagnosed, and she like I was like, you tell me that people with pink hair follow you about. You tell me that like the electricity. That's more schizophrenia, mate. I but that's what I said to her, and she went like after all of it. She was like, what? What do you mean? Like I like whatever, and I was like, I named like five things. She I was like, you made up a guy called Stephen Sloy. McSloy. <laughs> you made up this man who I thought was your boyfriend for two or three years, and then I realized he's a fictional character that you think. I control them. And then she went, do you know what it is? I've got ADHD. And I was like, no, maybe you do, right? But that is the least of your worries right now. Maybe, I bet. Sounds like there's schizophrenia in there as well. Does he sound sound like it, mate? Maybe you do have ADHD, but listen. You have more. (laughs) Listen, there's a tad, teeny tad more to deal with than that. (laughs) I think think that's maybe where my biggest grievance with it came from. And that's emotional. That's like my my own experience. Does that make sense? So I I wanted to get out why why I've actually probably got a trigger with it. And I think, I I forgot about that, but I think that was my first sort of, time being like fuck this thing that stopped my mum get because she used to always say it and it used to wind me up so much ah you can't eh? that's how like i so talking about that right i've i went to the doctors for like four or five years on and off for anxiety try to give me pills and i'm like i don't i always knew that it wasn't anxiety right but then when i obviously last year i was like i get adhd i actually looked into everything else as well so i looked into bpd I looked into narcissistic personality disorder. I looked into schizophrenia. Because I was like, look, unfortunately, there is a possibility that I have other things. Because when it comes to like ADHD, you're either one or the other, right? You're either super fucking confident or you hate yourself, right? Now, that's a thing that happens in like narcissistic personality disorder, BPD, and... Um, I was like, right, maybe I, maybe I might not just have ADHD. Maybe I, maybe I have something else. Like, if I've got these symptoms, then I'm going to look into everything. I'm going to make sure that I'm not just saying one or the other. And I obviously looked into narcissistic personality disorder, and I was like, I don't actually think I have this. And then I spoke to Paul. I says, like, I, like, I don't know if I've got like narcissistic personality. You don't. I know, no. So that's what he said. He's like, look, see the fact you've even looked into it and. Like I have narcissists don't I know. try to diagnose themselves. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> that, that's your, that's your the first thing should be you don't have that's this if you're reading this. <laughs> that's no. That's what it says on some of the pages. If you're like he, if you ah. went this far, then you don't. 
as like cool like I think with the alpha like I look into borderline personality disorder, which is basically the old school ver- version of bipolar. They just classify it as that now. They don't really so confusing, isn't it? Aye, aye, aye. They don't really. They don't because I've, I've looked into all this for my, 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 like I've probably done the same. I was doing it from to try to fucking diagnose my mum. Not but, diagnose her, but I was like, what's going on with this? So I was, lady? I was. There was a couple of things with BPD, and I was like, that doesn't. So, like that doesn't go with what like I, what do you remember I can't remember I can't remember but BPD is quite BPD is really severe like I know for a fact that I couldn't do the job I do and have the friends I do and have the family like I couldn't have built what I've built now as quickly as I did if I had something like that because it's really severe like it really it really hurts but then I was like mate, the, what made me did question that I'd maybe had that is um, the fact that I struggled so much in relationships mm. and I was like right when like because my, my childhood was really bad really good it was like bad no really good it was never really good but it was sometimes all right but then it was like really bad and it's like so fluctuational and that can cause like that can cause that kind of thing forever I like the hyper vigilant stuff as well I, 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 it, can, it can cause it because that's why it can cause what... BPD if you're really young and you're going through that right like, Th- this is what I don't understand as well is like does because it when, I, I, when I, you're I, that young age do people You're get right. misdiagnosed because of the effects of their trauma as well? Which, I, which, um, which, that that book I read, read the body keeps the score, that really go. And so this is my problem with like practitioners and stuff as well. Is like, I don't think we know enough about like about everything yet. No, we don't. Until you can really delve into like brain scans and have proper study, we've got names for a lot of things, but and I think it can. Sometimes it can help people di- being diagnosed, and sometimes it can't. So I was. So it's it. That's. Do you, do you get what I mean by that? Because hundred percent. Like hundred percent. I feel like we're n- we're not at a point where we don't. We know. actually know what's going on with with everyone. No, we don't. We don't have a fucking clue. I follow. I, I can't remember his name. But the guy from America. He's a psychiatrist, and then his psychiatrist. I told you the other day. He does brain scans, and he's like, "Look, this brain's got ADHD, and this brain does actually have ADHD. You can see by the brain scan, but look completely different." They have different types of ADHD, but you can tell by the way the frontal lobe works. So your frontal lobe is... I don't want to get this wrong before I go any further, but your frontal lobe function is like your emotions and all that. I'm just going to say... Front- I, I've read up, I've read a lot on this recently, but I'm not too so caught up on... The, one of the biggest... So you've got dopamine for ADHD. Uh, let's not try to pretend that no. we know exactly what we're talking about here, but I will we'll try, but so we'll I, get so something wrong. So your frontal lobe is like... For the people with genuine ADHD, it takes longer to develop to full full development, and it never fully develops the same as people right. with non ADHD. That's still like another big, massive component. And that's why these brain scans in America will one hundred percent be able to tell you you've got ADHD. That's why I have such a big thing against going to the NHS and getting private, because I still feel if I went to private and I paid for it, then they're going to tell me I've got ADHD. This is what we're talking about either the other day. day. So but this, it's this such is a my fucking taboo. This is my problem with it right now. That people are like, what they're like, why would we get misdiagnosed or like, like why, why would why would I go through all the hassle of paying a thousand pound to get a diagnosis right, which is fair, but also why would why did he charge in a thousand pound? I know, and they're like, oh, because it's extensive criteria, and I was like. Well, how come you can just go and talk about anxiety or depression and get given a pill, but now ADHD is somehow a thousand pound to get diagnosed? And we can't. Di- just this one you thing. can't just get diagnosed. Like I don't know if you can get diagnosed from the NHS. This is what I mean. I'm you on can, it. but it's very, very. Why? Why very is it long. so hard? Why? It's very, very long. Because they don't like putting money in it. Because it makes money elsewhere. That's that's my bias. That's my bias. So I, I again, I've not fully looked into that, but I, I, I just my skepticism goes. Why is it a thousand pound? So is mine. Why, why? And I want to be diagnosed so I can tell people, so I, I don't feel as guilty I just, about it. I'm just like, it just doesn't really, that whole system doesn't make sense to me. And I, and so, and I know for a fact that the way they're prescribing, um, and by the way, if people are, like, and lots of people will be on pills for anxiety or, or depression, it's not, I don't have any opinions on that. And if you feel like it helps you, don't take a PT's like opinion on that but they definitely do hand it out too easily oh fuck it like they don't they don't ever so address the issues on, on many occasions and you know me now i'm i'm severely unanxious in social mm. occasions and you get given it they were trying to give me it for social anxiety do you know what i mean instead they look and you don't have social anxiety i definitely don't have social anxiety so at the 
the whole system that way is that's I'm very skeptical because I I don't really see anything play out that well with like my clients in the NHS just now. So uh like obviously you've still got operations and that, but like help for any of these, like even like therapy. See when someone says oh, I'm going for therapy for the NHS, I'm like don't don't. Aye. You're, you'll be very lucky to get somebody good it, it fucked me up Going through the NHS to like, go for like anxiety therapy and all that Like It was actually a, a worse thing Because you're waiting 6, 7, 8 months Did you see the next person You might need to see the next person who, Which takes the same amount and of time It's a lucky dip who you get Aye. And you get 4 sessions I didn't achieve anything in 4 sessions with Paul He'd only just sort of gathered what was going on do you know what I mean? He's only sort of built a picture and then he could start asking aye, stuff. Aye, going in deep. Aye, it took him four sessions to really, like, know why I was there. Aye. Because, ov- uh, like, say within an hour, it might take me 50 minutes to get to what I wanted to talk about because I'm so fucking, I'm so, ge- you, I feel so bad about it I that don't know what's happening. I'm, like, tipped on about it. Aye. Aye, aye. That's the same for a lot of things. So I'll go through a couple of hours and then we'll, we'll, let's like, so interrupting people all the time. Because we've done that this full podcast. I know, I know. But I used to, they used to go like to me, why do you keep it up to me? I, go, I don't know, mate. And that's part of it because it's like load of me and you're like, oh, I want to say something. Because you tell me something, I go, that's so good. I want to tell you mine. But people think it's like, oh, you're being so, like, you're being so rude and so rude. And I'm like, I'm not being rude. I just want to tell you what I want. It's like, I love your story. Let me tell you this. I just love my story. It's like when you're sitting in a kitchen taking cocaine, that's exactly what happens because you're, you go for a load of meat and high dopamine. That's why cocaine gives you the same kind of benefit. And that's why people like with ADHD will take the kind of drugs because it makes them feel like that all the time. And then obviously you crash harder. Now, I was actually quite upset when I heard this because I was like, maybe that's not my personality. Maybe I'm just not what I thought I'd be. But a lot of people with ADHD are actually very funny. Reason being is, if you're in a room with people and you make them laugh, it's such a high. Such a high. Such a high. So, you'll know me, you're like, I'm fucking daft as fuck and I love it. And it's like, is it? I was like, is this like actual my personality? I'm actual funny? Or is it just how my brain works to live life? Because no matter where I am, no matter if I'm at a family party, if I'm with you, if I'm with my other pals, I'm always the loudest, I'm always, I wouldn't say the funniest, but I'm always pretty funny, I'm always making people laugh. Mm-hmm. And I don't go, I'm going to make them laugh, it just happens. Mm-hmm. I, don't go, I don't go, I'm going to be the loudest, it just happens. And I, I've always been a loud kid for so long in my life, and I actually got quieter and quieter and quieter, but my brain never, like in here was so fucking loud. But people laughed to me, why are you so loud, why are you this, why are you that? And that fucked me up until I started as a PT, and they're like, "You can be as loud as you want." I fucking love it. I was like, "What?" Like, yeah, especially in the classes and that. Ah, like every workplace and that. Like, can I do that? Can I do this? I'm like, and then I'd go home, and they're like, "No, why are you so loud?" Like, I'd go to family stuff, and like, "Why are you this? Why are you that?" And I'm like, "All oh, right, I'm not going to be like that." Then obviously, you're not meant to be like that. You're not meant to be loud. You're not meant to say because I say out of tune things all the time by mistake as well. So like, because my brain knows it's going to give me a rush. But I have no filter to the f- point where I don't think about what I've said. And see when I say it back to myself, I go, oh my God, I did say that. But it's like my brain will just go, bang. And I, get, I get a high after because people go, oh. Seeing people go, oh, as well. Like, see if, they, if you get a reaction, not just a funny reaction. See people go, well, what the fuck? I go, well, that's quite, I feel quite good. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And then that's where, like, that's some bad traits yet. Because you're like, that's where I actually need to double, double, triple check some things I say. Right. Well, I feel a lot like I do actually feel better. Like as in I feel like I understand it mm-hmm. a good bit more. And it's like it's almost just all we had to do was go in detail about all those you symptoms. It's okay. when people talk say the symptom, but that that's they say like they describe it in two words. Mm-hmm. Whereas when you give more detail you can go, ah right, that's This is why it's happening. Do you, do you get what I mean? Like aye, so aye. like when you go uh struggle to pay attention, I'm like, right, that means nothing. Aye. But then if you can go into why and like, then how severe it is, then that's It's when you look at things like being funny and um, interrupting people and you can have a description for it and understand why it happens, you go, well, that would make sense because he always does that and he's a good person. So if you can go, he's a good person, he seems really nice, but he does things that are out of cuff and I'm, I, like, I genuinely try and note it, mm. but I still what do What was it. the last thing you were going to say? So I was going to say about the frontal lobe. So we're talking about the frontal lobe and now... Uh, I say that that's for people with ADHD. That's how they can tell with a brain scan. If you've got ADHD, 
because it doesn't fully develop or it doesn't develop anywhere near as quick. So they say, like, for somebody with ADHD, it can be 32 to 33. For a normal person, 25. That's how, that's the difference. And, by the way... What numbers are you referring to? What does that mean? Like, 25 years old. Oh. So okay. it fully develops. For the average person, 25 years old, roughly. An average person with ADHD, 32 to 33. Now, because women... And, but I will say one thing. Because women and men are so biologically different, and if you think men and women are the same, you're completely false when it comes to biology, right? ADHD shows itself so differently because of like testosterone, estrogen, progesterone, all these different hormones end up showing these symptoms slightly differently in men and women. So I can only speak from a man's perspective. That's why I'm so hyperactive because my testosterone is quite high. Do you know what I mean? So that elite, like that fucking boosts on my hyperactivity. A woman with low testosterone and high estrogen through genetics is not going to show the hyperactivity that I do. Mm. It's still have ADHD, still suffer with the same problems, but she just doesn't jump about and show it. Mm. Right? And then the frontal lobe part, that's what's um that's what's that controls your movement, your voluntary movement. So what do I do all the time? No. Move like fuck. Uh, your uh, expressive language. So I say things out of cuff. And I'm like, I didn't mean to say that. Like, I've had to apologise. And I go, look, I know I've just said that two seconds ago. But I genuinely didn't mean that. And you go, ah, why Why the fuck would you say it then? I go, I genuinely, it's not like somebody, so if somebody's like narcissistic, right? They'll say it and mean it. And when they get found out, they'll track back. And they'll gaslight. They'll gaslight and all that. But I'll be like, well, I, I, my brain will go, I genuinely didn't mean that. And I genuinely didn't. Because it, it's just like, my, my brain just... It's no got that filter that a lot of people have. Mm. And when we say filter, it's no like there's something in there. There's like chemicals genuine in your brain that would stop you from doing that. And then executive functions, are, that's what's controlled by the frontal lobe. Right, we'll try it because I'm not going to go for longer than like an hour and 20 minutes. We'll try to touch on it. But I've come, like, that Joe Wick stuff is, it's not even that bad. I know that I'm maybe not even going to title this in to do with Joe Wicks because <laughs> we just spoke about ADHD. Um, but what he was trying to say that he, so so see with Joe Wicks in general, right? I had like used to slag the workouts a little bit when I was like bit, right, so starting PT, but it's very easy to slag because. But after you read into him, I don't think he's like I don't think. No offense to anyone who's his big fan or anything, but I don't see think he's really intelligent. But I think he's got a good heart. And uh, when I was listening, also, when I was listening to that podcast, I was like, this guy. Has I think he's got he's got something to offer the world, okay. and I have nothing I, like, and also see with the training stuff that he's doing, and like the way he's going into schools. I'm like, you so know good. what? I have nothing bad to say about that because I don't want to do that, and I see the benefit of it. Like as in, I don't have anything better to offer than what he has. Aye, aye. Like I think he's probably nailing that pretty well, and also like. The way he's training, that's probably the best way to get kids active. Like, you know what I mean? Like, more intense, body sort weight, of fun, fun, uh, fun uh, body weight stuff. I agree, absolutely. We aren't, we aren't going into schools and getting kids to deadlift, you know what I mean? They'll, they would absolutely despise it, and it's not probably the right thing. So, change my, like, I, I don't, I don't think he should really be touching on other subjects. Cause I know we've spoke about ADHD, right? But I've came at it from, like, you, de you definitely have it, and I don't, and you're just educating me on it, and I don't think I'm educating the world on it. I'm just like Do you know what I mean? I, I don't I'm just sharing I don't my, have my like, experience and what I've I don't have something well. controversial to say about ADHD that I think oh like I could come out and go like one of my things that I was thinking before was like is it like a, a response to trauma? I don't know. So I wouldn't say that. I but I would ask someone I, like I would that's a question I would have for someone. But I think he sort of came out and said things that he's maybe fought in his head and then he said it a wee bit too factually. It's like, you can't really come out and say stuff like that. So let's see what he, say, let's see what he said and then we'll, we'll have our opinion on it. Cause I'd, but I'll be honest, I forgot what he said. So he, he just went, like, he was talking about food. We did both listen to this, but ah, yeah, we he, listened to all He was just it. talking about how children eat so poorly these days. Uh, we're only getting more processed and processed foods. And that is what's causing the extra diagnosis of ADHD in kids. What the one sentence he said that, well, he just shouldn't have said it but again this was a 40 minute interview and I've said probably worse stuff on this podcast already definitely, like, definitely. like way worse stuff and way dumber stuff um, he said 
kids are sort of eating themselves into anxiety and depression. I was like, that's just not the way I would word that at all. And I, I, that makes it sound like you can get anxiety and depression from food. And I don't like that wording. Do you know what I mean? I don't. You, I don't really. Th- I think you can feel way, way worse with food, and food is something you can use to to help you. And if you if you've got anxiety or depression, like the first thing you should be doing is like if you can, because when sometimes you're in so that state, is but is like looking at your your lifestyle. That should I'm not saying that'll fix it because that's the dumb thing to say as well. But it's the first sort of thing you can control. But he was making it out as if like doing like eating badly then lead is is like a main contributor for that and I didn't like pinning those two thing. things. Like I don't but again it's one way I don't think anything he said was wrong. I think you just said it the wrong way. Like as a kid we are not educated on what we put in our body. We're just given by our mum and dad. And in school's all school was awful. Aye, shit. We used to just eat like four donuts. So you're never gonna feel good and if you've already got a lot of hardships then poor quality food is only going to make you feel worse and it can lead to a point where you can end up in that low, low place and like basically fucking can't get out of it. I don't think, it doesn't cause depression, but it will get it will get you to a point where... I would say it's less than ideal eating badly when, you've, when you're a kid and you've got, like, especially if you're you've already got, struggling. Yeah, you've got a chaotic, why it horrendously and it definitely didn't help me, but... But you're going to eat when you feel bad at the same time, so him, to him to say that, is it like a catch-22? When you're feeling shite, that's when you eat shite. Yeah. Like, I would have been, I'd have been using food to control my emotions when I was young, or like, Oi. dumb my emotions, so like, it, 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 it just isn't practical, no. saying stuff like that as well. It no, just it doesn't, doesn't help it, anybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, Helps that's no one. More, more what I meant. But... At the same time, I do actually think he's trying, and he's net. He's trying po- to help. He's net positive. Aye, he just uh, he's just stepping out well outside. He's his, like, you want to feel better, eat better quality food. Aye, he should just stick to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? He should. Aye, st- aye, aye. He should just not touch the. You've got depression because you eat shit, and instead of going, you only feel better if you eat better. Aye, aye. Just leave that bit out because you don't you don't know enough aye, to aye. talk about stuff like that. And that that's that's what he's done wrong. He's just been, he's just said that off the cuff. And look, he probably looks back on that and go, you know what, I'm well, wrong, so but I still... Be- he's, that's what he's came out and said. I still believe what I think in this degree, but I definitely didn't mean to say it like that. Aye, uh, which is fair. And uh, honestly, like, the the whole... Like, the, there was an article that was spread about it. They try to fucking defame him. And it's just pure pish. Like, it's just... And, like, the amount of people, right, nowadays that just read something like that, share it, and then don't actually, like... Cause I'll tell you what I done. I read it, then I watched his apology, and I was like, I mean, if he said that, and then his apology is basically just him doubling down, and then all the comments were like, "Oh, you've just," and then you've doubled down, and then I went and listened to the to the podcast, and I'm like, "Man, that guy's just trying to help, and he just worded that wee tiny bit wrong." Ah, yeah, that's and when it, I was listening. I was like, "What the fuck, man?" The the host was doing my fucking nothing, but he was just. Uh, Typical posh English, and then I got an ad. That's hard to ask. Then, then I got I an agree. ad for cricket in between it. I was like, oh, did you ever get anything in between it? Oh, this, this is too English for me. It's like, I, but he was like up his arse. I, I, I was just more getting annoyed at being too English. <laughs> see, if you're, see if you're intelligent, right? And you speak about like anxiety, depression, like for somebody who's got ADHD, right? I go, right, like it's took me so long to learn about it for myself. I knew and actually I have it. it. Aye, aye. Right? And I'm struggling with all the things that everybody else struggles with, and I like. I go for highs and lows. I have such bad times because of it. I I listen to that and go, right, mate. Like you're forgiven, fucking hell, man. Like Aye. it's not a big, it's not a big deal. <laughs> like he's just said a wee bit of hang rang. It's like, all right, mate. Like I've got ADHD. That's no how it works. I can explain it to you if you want me to talk. Right, but people, that's that. People get on like he's like campaigning to bring back slavery or something. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it is. Fuck that cunt. Joe Wicks says we we should go back to Africa. <laughs> it's, just, it's just the cancel culture is mental. It's just why it's. I hate, even hate the word cancel culture because I'm just even over like talking about stuff like that. But just social media in general, like I actually hate it. Aye, like I do. I do. It's meant to rile you up. It, These people are riled up to him about him for nothing. Well, nothing. even like the the last sort of like we should be educated on human nature way more. Like how like. Like, you see stuff like going at, like, 
looking back on how Hitler managed to like indoctrinate all of Germany. Stuff like that, we should be way more... Ed- and I, I know we are educated on it a bit, but even just like the psychological tricks he uh, played, because to get it's done. what tabloids were doing, yeah. it's what now the tabloids that are now... At, why are you looking at my fingers like that? Cause I'm, no, because I'm laughing, because what you're about to say is I was speaking about somebody else all day. Well, it's, what, it's also what like everyone's doing. So it's now not just like tabloids and the mainstream media. It's now what like podcasters are doing. It's now like don't do this exercise or else. Yeah, exactly. Don't eat this food or else. So like, and I've made that type of content, I've but it, it as well. felt horrendous. Mm-hmm. Like it felt awful, and even like the last, I've not made podcast clips in a while, but the last ones that were doing well was just me slagging off Stephen Bartlett. And although I do still like, I think that guy is one of the well, he is the epitome of that. But am I really better for? making viral videos about them. Do you know what I mean? Aye. Like, Aye. that. but that's all social media is to me. That's a lot. I feel like that's the only way to really grow. And if you don't see it like that, you're going to really struggle because there's always, it's propaganda. Uh, we're all creating many propaganda mm-hmm. and spreading more and more false information because we're playing on human nature because that's the main way, like that's the easiest and like cre- creating anger and creating emotion like that is the way that you grow. Yeah. And so we need to understand human nature because un- social media is just making everything that See, was it's bad worse. You grow the numbers. It's not the way that you grow your soul, your like your health, your character, or help people. No, nah. which was my problem. Because mm-hmm. even though we had a, this was going to be about Joe Wicks, and you can title it that. I might not even title it that just to prove a point, and we'll just talk. We'll just make call it ADHD. But it was meant to be about Joe Wicks, but spent an hour actually just going back and forth, and I feel like I understand ADHD way way more. Good, and that was the whole point. Of it. Good, because my family and that don't. Like, my family still go through the same things. They go, why do you know this? Why do you know that? Why do you know that? But I, I, I've told you I literally struggle with that. Like, because people run about me know I'm no lazy. So I'm like, if you know I'm no lazy and you know I struggle with that. Then but being honest, I would feel like that towards you because I don't know. Aye, aye, aye. Do you know what? But that's why I want and I know, no, I get that 100%. So, I get it. But I don't think... That's how when uh, Joe Wick said that, I'm like, I get it, because I struggle to understand it. So the fact that he doesn't, is no fucking certain mad to me. He's not a horrendous person for it. No? But see, before I had anxiety you know, as well, I'd have been like, what the fuck are you on about? Aye, aye, you don't understand. Was, I'd be like, you don't understand, we don't understand. Man. There's an all And I, you don't understand what you don't understand. And I'm in the, in the moment whilst I'm in the same moment whilst I'm in the future. <laughs> no, you're in the, the you're in the before moment. Well, you're in the moment. Well, you're in the future. Say so that we. So you're time traveler. I'm a fucking time traveler. <laughs> I'll tell you tell you a funny story before we get off, right? So go on for the time travel. So we'll finish on this. It's a funny one. Just to finish, end the podcast on. on go. So somebody that listened to your podcast, don't know if they're listening right now, right? They were like, "What's your ex?" Like talking to me. Do I know this person? No, no, no. But it is quite funny. Right. So I was like chatting to him, like blah 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 blah. So, see if you're out there, by the way. Like, this isn't an invitation to message me, right? It is. No, no, it's not. It is. And uh, she's like, what's your ex? I'm like, oh, Lassie's a guy best pal. And she's like, oh, I've got a guy best pal. I'm like, I've just stuck myself. Like <laughs> is the guy best pal gay? No. <laughs> so, what do you think of that? Well, well right. So, your ex is a guy best pal. Mm-hmm. I mean, we were going through your insecurities the other day. You you do have some of those things you need to watch. Oh no, no I I'll tell you I do. I'll tell you one. Like more guy pals and girl pals, I'll I'm with you. Aye aye aye, that's a hundred percent. A guy on that one, I'm like fifty percent now because I sat and thought about it, right? And I was like, you know what? Maybe I'm wrong. Depend- but more guy pals, man, that's whoa. I, I having a guy pal, I'm fine with. Aye, aye, aye. I, I, I've, I've came to conclusions because I'm like, I train a lot, a lot of girls and I've seen I'm friends with them. But Aoife's got plenty, of, like, Aoife has a massive uni group and she's got one or two that she's more pally with mm-hmm. and she'll like, have dinner with them and I don't have any insecurities because I know who they are. Aye, aye, aye. No, I did think about it, but then I was like, fucking hell, man, I've just put my foot in But I can understand, there is obviously people that are in relationships that will have just heard me say that and go, no, my girlfriend is definitely fucking him. <laughs> I know, I know. I, like, I, I mean, that's different. Like you, you, CV that, type, you, you're getting cheated on. CV, like, ty- CV type in guy best pal on uh, Google. Yeah. All it comes up is like mad. Like, so I, guess, I, so I can understand, right? Sometimes <laughs> it's, it's definitely net negative, <laughs> but I know for a fact nothing's going on. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I am, and I have zero insecurities about it. So it's just broad statements like that. But 
and all guy mates and hardly any girl mates I'm like and then they're always out with the guy mates so I'm like nah I'm not buying it <laughs> I'm just not buying it. Do I you know what I mean? I see you'd say to finish it off on because it's so it's a funny topic. Yeah, it's a funny topic because it made a thought. But I was like, see, I'm the more I'm people I'm are like wrong, tiptoe to around degree. these things. I'm like, fucking shut up. If I, girl's got all guy mates and she's always posting them, like, like I'm gonna be like, what? Why? Why all guy mates? I, and why do you always have pictures with them all the time? <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? That's how I'm like. I'm just like, why though? <laughs> <laughs> Why are they all pals with you? That's what I think. Why do they want to be pals with you? I like you, but well, I like you. No, but I way. also think, why does she want to be pals with all of them? Aye, aye, aye. And not have girl mates. Do you know mm. what I mean? Does it make her feel better to have loads of? <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> These are the things that goes through a guy's brain that people won't think about. And I'm just being honest. Mm. I like that. That's a good way. I, I prefer being honest. See if people don't like it. Fuck up. <laughs> just fuck up and just tell. You've got fucked up opinions about stuff. I thought that. ADHD was made up because my mum's got schizophrenia. <laughs> <laughs> and she, do you know what I mean? Like, we all have some daft things in uh, our head. We our, our minds are, we, that's why you need to be malleable. You need to change I didn't mind. think ADHD was made up, but I was getting pissed off at my aye, mum aye, constantly aye. telling me she had it as the least of your issues. <laughs> I think my mum said the same, mate. That's, that's what you go to, like, if you've, if you think you've got schizophrenia, you go to, I've got ADHD. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. That sounds like a mental home, that ADHD. Yeah, I, can have a I can that. I can stay in my house and <laughs> have that. <laughs> I can just continue to run away from the ladies with the pink hair we used to use, fine. <laughs> right, we'll end it there. Um, and if you just want a new podcast to listen to, Bulletproof Mindset. Bulletproof Mindset with James and Dale. I'm uh, sure some of you listening anyway. Anyway, have a good I, crossover. I've definitely got a crossover. Thank you very much and I feel educated. Thank you.